Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My job is made somewhat easier because of the work that you and the ranking member have done, and I mean that sincerely, and I thank you and <clears throat> Senator Collins for calling this hearing. I've actually encouraged uh, the calling of hearings of a variety of different committees because obviously the people that I represent would like answers. They are extremely concerned, everyone in the state, along the Gulf Coast, particularly those along the coastal communities, uh, Madam Secretary. So I want to begin, Mr. Chairman, by saying that the questions that you asked in your opening statement, I hope that we will get answers to, and I thought that they were excellent and right on point. Secondly, um, Madam Secretary, I want to thank you for your multiple visits uh, to uh, Louisiana over the last several months before this incident happened, working on the last incident that occurred, as well as your time focused on this one, and the many senior level officials that have been on the ground from the Coast Guard to the Interior Department to NOAA to EPA. You all haven't just sent your mid-managers or your newly appointed um, directors, but your cabinet officials have been there and continue, and I get good feedback from Republican and Democratic local officials because of that, and I want to, on their behalf, uh, express our thanks. I would say that the people in Louisiana are very interested in a couple of important questions, some of which you hit. When will this uncontrolled flow be stopped? Is everything being done that can possibly be done? When and how will claims be paid? Will they be transparent? Will they be adequate? What are the long-term impacts to our fisheries, which is a multi-billion dollar industry, as you know? And how can this industry be made safer for the future? I'm not going to ask you to respond to all four of those now, but in writing, I would like uh, some response. I would like to take a minute of my questions, Mr. Chairman, to put some things in perspective for this situation. I think it's important. I did this at the oversight hearing on energy. I did this at the oversight hearing for the EPW hearing, and I'd like to do it today. There are 42,645 wells that have been drilled in state and federal waters in the Gulf of Mexico alone. The first deep well was drilled 30 one years ago, not last week, the first deep well 31 years ago in 1979. From that time until 2008, there have been 2,239 deep water wells drilled, averaging approximately 133 wells per year. Getting to your point, uh, Ranking Member uh, Collins, um, in 1990, you're correct, only 4% of the oil coming from the Gulf was responsible in the deep water, only 4%. But today, 60% of the oil coming from the Gulf comes from deep water and ultra-deep water. The record will show that from 1947 to 2009, only 1,000, I'm sorry, 175,000 barrels have been spilled out of 16 billion produced. That's about one thousandth of one percent of total production. So until this happened, the record was pretty good. The problem is this blowout is putting more oil in the water in one and a half days than has been put in this water in the last decade. That is startling to those of us that are fairly familiar with the industry and we're extremely concerned and want it to be safer. So one, I support the President's 30-day look. I most certainly support tighter controls over deep water wells and would say to this committee, we pioneered this technology in the Gulf. It's in Gulf of Mexico. We did. It's important that we get this right because it has a major impact on how these wells are drilled around the world. If ours are safe, most other countries will be safe. And we have an obligation not just to ourselves but to the people of the planet, actually. So let me ask a couple of things, because I'm extremely interested in how much money our government has spent on research and development, either through Homeland Security, EPA, NOAA, or Interior. Do you all have a record? Now, you won't have from those other agencies, but Madam Secretary, for your own agency, do you know if any money, and if so, what the dollar amount is or what percentage is spent? on response to a catastrophe like this? 
And if you don't have that exact number, could you give it to me in writing and maybe comment generally on if you think Homeland Security is doing what it needs to do to be better prepared or, or prepared for an incident like this? Well, we're always, uh, uh, you know, as I said earlier, you learn from every incident. You know, you begin with the plans and you exercise the plans, but then, uh, as any incident coordinator or commander will tell you, you've got to work the problem at that point. You've got to go at it, and that's what we have been doing. Uh, uh, I will tell you, uh, we are accumulating within the Department of Homeland Security the, the costs that we are expending in our department's uh, response. Uh, uh, that includes the Coast Guard. Um, it will not be an insignificant sum. Uh, and we have asked through the NRT uh, that the other federal agencies keep track of the costs that they are expending. It would be, since we are really in the middle of response, as I indicated to Senator McCain, uh, uh, I think it would be premature to give you an estimate of that. Okay, and I just want to restate on this. Um, I know that we don't have the full estimate of what the costs are going to be, and I'm assuming that BP is going to step up, as they have said, and cover all of these costs for individuals, for businesses, for the government at every level. Uh, and I know that they have been um, forthcoming with some of the requests from our governors, $25 million in authority, up to a $1 million for some of the counties, which has been impressive, but we may need more than that. But it's the research and development dollars in these major agencies that I'm wondering, considering this industry, just the industry for bonuses and severance, have contributed $165 billion dollars to the Federal Treasury since 1955, $165 billion. What percentage of our budgets and their budgets, I'm going to be asking them, are going to research and development on specifically safety, um, equipment, new technology, and cleanup? Because we may need, I suggest, to invest more money to make sure this never happens again. So we're going to try to collect those that data, um, Mr. Chairman, and my time's expired. Thank you.